What's up, guys? Want to do the stretch? All you guys want to do is all stretch with me at the beginning of each of these streams. That's cool. Feels good. So I'm sorry if there's a little bit of background noise. You guys tell me. Um, I'm running a fan behind my computer. It was getting really hot. The fan is working overdrive. So I'm trying to cool it down. Uh, I don't know if some of you guys saw, but I did a stream right before this with Gregory Sif. Instagram, so you can actually still see it for the next 24 hours at Instagram.com slash Gregory Sif, which was awesome. Uh, if I'm sure you guys all kind of know the story, uh, but I've I've looked up to Gregory Sif for a long time. He's when I saw that he was a project artist, that got me really excited, and it gave me an opportunity to reach out to him about the project. And since then, we've become good friends. Uh, Honestly, we're, we're like same, same wavelength and so cool. Anyways, because of that, I had like a high energy interview with him. I'm honestly, I'm kind of chill. I'm trying to mellow out because I actually want to make this a pretty short stream tonight. Let me turn this off right now. Uh, how, how big of a deal does it make for the sound for you guys? Because, uh, oh, that's a, that's a loud thing. Yeah, Alex says I opened his Jackie painting on there. So Alex hasn't painted in, he said, 18 years. And we did a trade. So he sent me this. It's Jackie Robinson, which I think is awesome. It's acrylic on canvas. I know we've talked about the metallic. I love that he puts an actual kind of metallic paint on the face, which is awesome. And I showed that on Craig's stream uh, because he had commented because he was on there. And he's on here now. So what's up again? Thanks. Oh, volume. How about now? Better? Let's see here. All right. Hopefully now we'll see. We'll see if it's better. I've, I'm cranking it now more. Not completely, but. All right. Anyways, uh, we're going to do a couple things tonight. Rocking my OG Oakland A's hat. Shout out, Dad. Thanks for buying all the season tickets for us. And these are our pins. My dad was also uh, uh, on the stream earlier, which is awesome. So cool. So, um, thank you, Dad. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. So, tonight's going to be pretty quick. Um, I definitely want to answer questions as they're coming in. I'm going to try and be engaged. I'm not going to be like opening packs or anything. Um, obviously I'm kind of hyped on this <laughs> where it's hard reversed hyped on the Mark McGuire, uh, just came out on tops.com. The website link is just down below this video. Actually, I think I can put it in here too. Let's see. Nope. That's definitely not it. That's my stream code. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Mike asks, can I talk about the ESPN article going live tomorrow? I can. So there's an ESPN article that's going live tomorrow. It's covering Project 2020. They're highlighting kind of uh, four pieces by four different artists. My Mark McGuire is one of those four pieces. And then uh, actually Andrew Thiel's, Thiel, Thiel, I'm not sure how to say it, Thiel, I think. His Jeter, which released with my Mark McGuire, which is one of my favorite, like top three cards in the whole set, is beautiful. It's so good. I think it's his best card. It's one of the best cards ever in the whole project so far. Um, he's in the ESPN article. And then uh, who else? Ben Baller is in the article. They're talking about his Trout card, which smashed all the PR records in the past, almost 35K. Um, I think that the pairing today with, uh, with Thiel's Jeter and Maya McGuire is going to beat the total print run. That ever's happened, uh, but we'll see where we end up individually. Um, it's not all about the numbers, but I am trying to like, I mean, this is my favorite card I've ever painted. And I knew it would be even before the project. So like if I'm gonna hype any card, it will be this one. And I do wanna try and like 
get that print run as high as possible. Uh, to get my art into more homes, and um, I'm just really proud of the piece. I think it came out really cool. It's been tough not sharing it leading up to it because I've actually been working on it for a long time and work on a little rework parts. Um, I made some changes. I had some very last minute changes actually yesterday with tops. I had to do a change. So yeah, anyways, it's really cool. And ESPN is going to write about it. And that's like ridiculous to have an ESPN article at the same time as the card is live on tops is it's crazy. Um, I feel like there's so much momentum now with, uh, with the project and like, it's really crazy to think that like, I literally have painted five cards out of 20. So it's a lot to do still, which is great. Uh, it's going to be tough though, because like, I love this card and my next card is Mike Trout. Same thing. I've worked on him for a long time. Reworked parts, uh, still going to rework a little bit. That kind of content with, uh, with the Trout's gonna release exclusively through Phil Hughes, Phil's Poles. We're gonna do, um, kind of like the other night where we did the Gary V, like, you know, tweet to Gary V. I had to buy more of these, by the way, because we had so many people on that stream. So I got two more on eBay opened, very cheap, but they were open, so no golden ticket opportunities, which is fine. Because I'm gonna paint on them and I'm gonna give them all to the people that were on that stream. Uh, and then I've got another guy who I met on that stream who is sending me five more boxes same size i don't know if they're open or not it doesn't really matter um and he's trading that for towards like artist autographed um art which is cool so i've got like seven more boxes of gary v that i gotta open and paint on just so i can fulfill all the people that filled out the form that day like we got like 500 tweets to gary v oh, i don't know if i can tell you guys there's very exciting gary v news coming soon um yeah soon we'll just say that stay tuned next friday or something uh so that went really well so with the trout we're gonna do a separate youtube where we we just bombard phil with tweets and we got to make him start sharing this trout so we're gonna say like release the twat release the trout you know or something like that like a catch what's it called when you like catch and then you throw it back kind of thing like you know give us the trout back i don't know just spitballing here Uh, Denning asks if uh, serious question in favor. Can we see the previous version of McGuire? If not now, can you post it on Twitter? Um, I'd have to check with Tops with that. Uh, I think uh, like I can I can tell you guys what happened. Um, I put the number forty one on the jersey, and because you know I loved uh, the Team USA card was my first like very prized possession. Oh, there should be one right around here. Where I put them. There we go. And so it's like I wanted to kind of honor that card. What, of all the ones, there we go. When he wore this jersey, he was number 41. Now, the card that I used, the image, is the 87. And the border, when you see the finished border with the wood grain, 87. Like I wanted, you know, we're, we're given an assignment and it's to recreate an iconic tops card. That's the card. It wasn't the 85 card. And so like I wanted to, you know, give a nod of the head to that first card. And so like I did the jersey color swap and I put the American flag. Um, it was just like, uh, I don't know, I thought the 41 was cool. But when I said that in tops, they were a little bit worried that um, they wanted 25, keep it like that it was clear that it was the uh, 87 card also, I guess. So anyways, I, I like repainted it like literally on top um it's like another layer so i don't really i can't like show live pictures of it but um, i have some photographs when i finish it mark do i have a prediction of the print run on this one um man uh i don't know man i think i've seen a lot of people say i've never bought a card on project 2020 until this one and i've seen a lot of people say i've only been buying one and they bought 10. but um you know like Ben Baller, I, I can't imagine how Ben Baller's Twitter was blowing up when he released the Trout too. So like mine has been, I think it's gonna do well. I mean, honestly, like if I break 10K, which I think is a very uh, modest prediction, that more than doubles my previous print run and I still have what everyone else considers the super, like the mega print runs of a set, right? With Jeter and um, Griffey 
and trail. So I think if I break 10K, I'm gonna be happy. If I got under 10K, I'd be unhappy. Anything above 10K, I'm unhappy, and I'm very confident it's gonna be over 10K. And then it's just like, it's whatever, because even though this one's my favorite card, um, I have 15 left to go. <laughs> so like, it means the most to me from like the player and the story standpoint, but I think that the art is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm evolving and uh, learning and like getting a lot of feedback from the community, from you guys. Um, so, I don't think what I'm saying is I don't think this will be my highest print run. I think it will be a very high print run, uh, especially for McGuire across the board. But I think it will do well. But I still don't think it's going to be my top. Uh, and I don't even think my trout is going to be my top. I think that this whole project is starting to get momentum. More and more and more stuff is going to come on board. And soon, like 10K is going to be considered a short print. I think that that uh, is a good place to be at. You know, if you look at the print runs that just came out yesterday, the Saladin, or sorry, they came, what did they come out today? Saladin Ichiro and um, the Clemente by Old Man Allen and and I actually I like both of those cards and I haven't uh, I've loved all of King Saladin stuff but I haven't loved all of Allen stuff and I really I actually really like this card. Uh, you look at those print runs; it's like one's just over 10k, one's just under 10k, um, with Saladin being over at 11 and change. I think that um I think those are going to be considered short print runs very soon, which is really cool. McGuire's print run has been very low so far. Great. I'm buying, I'm buying a bunch. <laughs> so I don't, even if it was short, like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to buy a bunch of them. Um, uh, let's see. Thank you guys. Can't wait for your Griffey. Agree. Those bad pages. Um, all right. So let's see here. We're going to do a couple things. I do want to answer some questions. Um, I want to tell the story and I'm reading it straight. I know my dad's on here. I'm reading it straight from what he sent because I want to get all the facts right. And I think you did a really good job writing it. So I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna do a story time tonight. Like I said, pretty short, pretty mellow. I just gave Gregory Siff all my energy uh, in a really good way. We had such a good, like, energetic conversation. Now I'm gonna, I'm getting ready for bed and like tomorrow ESPN. I mean, the stuff. If I could tell you guys, like Friday and next week and next Friday, and like it's, it's about to get really crazy, in a good way. All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do story time first with my dad. I'll pull up the post here. Great race I posted up that. Okay. All right, and as a disclaimer, so I'm gonna read this story. Um, it's on my Instagram. Uh, let's see. There's me and my dad at an A's game, and then I have the story that he wrote. I'm gonna read that to you guys. Um, I don't like, uh, I actually didn't really like reading out loud in school. Um, it like made me nervous. So like I've gotten actually very used to being in front of the camera and stuff, but even like, I don't really read that much. Cause like, you'll even see like, anybody that knows me knows I listen to audiobooks all the day and I'll be all day and I work and I'll listen to audiobooks And like, I literally like don't read. That's a disclaimer, so I might fuck up, but whatever, I don't really care. I'm not shy about it anymore. I just uh, am telling you guys that I might not be that good at it. And, you know, because everything's about to get so crazy and I think that it's always good to like improve yourself and like, you know, focus on uh, getting better and better every day. We're not gonna just do that one. I'm gonna read an excerpt from The Alchemist, which is a really cool story, I think. It's my favorite book of all time. Tony got me this copy, which is awesome. So we're gonna read back-to-back -back things. In between those two things, I'll, kind of scroll through some of the comments. I'll see if I if there's comments that I need to answer. Uh, ESPN come out tomorrow, 97 cloth. I don't know what time, digital, written. Um, what's up guys? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep kid, thanks. This is also another cool one. When we get to the Alchemist, this is another photo of me and my dad. So this, this is a super short print of my business card. I have a lot of my art on my business cards. But I just added, the last time I did prints, I added a couple new cards. This is another good one. That's me on a newspaper. My first press. And now tomorrow, the ESPN press. First ESPN press. Really cool. Anyways, we're going to do some story time because uh, it's good practice for me and I should be good at reading in front of people. And they're both good. And they're both great stories. Please give a hint about Gary. No hints allowed. 
Okay. Here we go. Thank you, Finn. Finn Moss. The true story of Mark McGuire's Freeway fans. In honor of Blake's upcoming Tops Project 2020 Mark McGuire card. Oh, and also, bear, like I literally might cry during some of this too, so if I do that, I'll try not to, but we'll see. <sighs> Background. Mark McGuire was a member of the 1984 U.S. Olympics baseball team and was picked 10th overall by the Oakland A's in that year's draft. In August of 1986, McGuire was called up to the show for the first time. Playing in only 18 major league games that year, he hit three home runs and drove in nine. Not bad. Looked like the big kid might stick. Fast forward, December 1986. Blake was approaching San, Di uh, Blake was approaching San Diego on Interstate 5, a good 500 miles south of his San Francisco Bay Area home. A veteran of more than 120 Oakland A's games, he was almost two years old. <laughs> Having nodded off in his car seat, he was startled by his mom and dad yelling, Blake, look, Blake. They were pointing at his car to the land to the right of him. <laughs> Told you guys. <sighs> Wildly waving. Some parents can be so uncool. The driver of the other car, none other than Mark McGuire, who looked puzzled by the antics. Man, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Blake, or maybe it was his mom, grabbed an A's cap, which by the way, it was probably this hat, for real. Held it to the car window so McGuire could see it. Mark smiled and gave Blake a friendly wave. Fast forward again. In the A's game in 1987 spring training camp in Phoenix, Blake, now more mature, seven months past his second birthday, had a chance to chat with Mark McGuire. <laughs> so cool, right? Oh, man. Blake's mom and dad, who were only there to provide protection, transportation, and game tickets, told Mark about how they'd seen him driving near San Diego that past December. McGuire remembered he said he'd been on his way to the Holiday Bowl football game, and that he'd been quite surprised to be recognized while driving on the freeway, minding his own business. He said there was a lot of competition to make the A's opening day roster, and he hoped he would manage to earn a spot. He dubbed Blake and the family as Freeway fans and recognized them as such whenever their paths crossed, like when we were seeking his autograph further down the road. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why this matters a lot. I think the alchemist will be easier to read pretty awesome every time i read it it's really, really cool i was pretty young so i didn't you know I, I now know it through through that story but it's really cool uh we need to get mark mcguire to sign the hat for real mark could sign the hat um or signing a painting you know or a card would be really cool That'll be a goal. Uh, when I do the autos, which will drop on my website probably early this weekend, uh, maybe pre-sale password protected this weekend, and then early next week, we'll make it public. Those autograph sales will be on proathleteportraits.com, uh, and, and a portion of that is gonna go to, I was actually just researching his charity today. Um, we've been donating a, a portion of the proceeds for all of the different uh, autographs to the player's charity. So that's like really cool and I think if nothing else like that might provide an opportunity to work with the charity and potentially get him to sign uh, whether it's you know the um, the card or the painting or do something <sighs> all right let's look at some comments everyone yeah thanks man uh, Christian asks if Mark has seen the card I don't know but I do know that he's gonna see it really soon with some stuff that's I mean, the ESPN thing tomorrow, I think, will get his attention. Uh, the, the, not, the next thing that I can't tell you guys about should get his attention, and then the next thing after that, next Friday, should also, that one might get his attention, but it will get a lot of attention. Uh, thanks, guys. If 
I start reading the comments, I'm going to cry again. Don't want to do that. Um, okay, so that was story number one. Uh, I think that uh, it's crazy, you know, coming from that to now and painting painting a Mark McGuire card and, uh, you know, everything is going to come. It's pretty exciting. So it's... It's been a really fun journey. I didn't, when I got into Project 2020, I had no idea it was gonna be like, like this heavy, but it's been great. Uh, everyone that I've met has been awesome. Uh, like stuff that I have for upcoming um, streams, which like I said, I'm not gonna do tonight. I'm actually wrapping it up pretty soon. Uh, but I've got like, I get so much mail from you guys and some of the stuff is just so ridiculous and, and so uh, thoughtful. So I wanna do like one YouTube where I'm just literally I've opened up all the stuff and I read it and then I have it like kind of organized and so I'm just going to open up and acknowledge all the people that have that have sent cool stuff. Hopefully uh, people know that I live stream every night that like there's a potential of them, you know, getting called out or shouted out, however you want to look at it. Um, but that's going to be really cool. I've also been like, my studio is like a factory right now. So I don't know, on this table right here is completely full of Jackie Robinson's autographed cards they're finished they've been signed on the front they've been signed on the back I'm doing a special UV code on the back of each card for my numbered autos for authentication so down the road if there are any questions about authenticity um, there's that so like those are done uh, they still need hologram stickers I have all my Don Mattingly's like stacked up um, with uh, all of the sticky stuff removed so what we're doing and I say we because I'm literally building a, a what I consider a dream team. It's amazing. Uh, Tony has been killing it with the publicity stuff and just like community building uh, within the card community. He's dealing with uh, shipping out all of the different card art. He's helped tremendously. Uh, and he's also coming tomorrow to help continue these down the pipeline. Uh, and then I have a new friend, Matt Castello, who I met actually through Twitter uh, very recently. And he just saw how much you know, physical labor, Tony and I were doing in the studio and all of our needs. And um, he lives in Astoria, which is very close to here. He said, hey, I can come by and just help. Um, and so he's come by a couple times now. Today was his second day. He crushed it. So when I say we, we literally is like a really cool we. Um, it's awesome. And uh, I think the team is just going to continue to grow and expand. And it's cool because it's so far, it's like people that are really good at what they do. Like Tony, publicity kills it. Um, community kind of management and building kills it uh, also a huge baseball card fan and that's what brought us together and we look at this new guy Matt uh, same thing like he's uh, he actually used to be a writer for MLB pipeline um, so he's like very deep in the baseball community and like knowledge and stuff so pretty great um, so we have a, we have a lot of uh, exciting stuff coming out um, and you guys are also part of the week because you guys getting to uh, help and uh, give ideas or feedback um, which is cool Eric yeah okay also yeah I mean while we're talking about talent and, and support uh, Eric those back pages um, moderator on here literally uh, I don't think he's missed a single stream and uh, Eric and I met very early in the project he's very involved uh, in card collecting community and very well respected and has an awesome YouTube channel and I love his videos. He's always like so chill. He's actually more like this version of Blake right now where I'm kind of mellow because usually I'm like loud. But um, he's so amazing and he's been helping so much. And um, yeah, always learning. Uh, and then also Boomer, who I'm not sure if he's here now, but he is another, um, uh, him and his son Noah. Yep, Boomer's here and Noah. Okay, great. So Boomer also is a super early uh, supporter and his son Noah is, they, you know, they've been watching a lot of the streams together and um, Noah's sending me some art and stuff, uh, which is really cool. And I've got a care package going out, which actually reminds me, one of the things that Tony and I need to do tomorrow is we've got, I have this huge list of stuff to send out to different people that I've been telling and I need to get that stuff out because it's about to get crazy and so we've got we picked out boxes for everyone and we labeled them and we say you know this box is for Noah and this box is for Eric and this box is for all the different people and so those are um they're actually next door in the in an empty studio that my landlord let me use for some storage temporarily and so tomorrow we're going to pull those back in here 
finished putting all the goodies in there and putting all kinds of stuff, card art, ring pops, um, and then whatever we talk about. So some people it's art supplies. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, I guess super grateful that like the team is so good and that team is like both the people here and you guys are like killing it. Um, this is really awesome. All right, so I think what I'll do is um, I'm gonna plug uh, the website one more time. So this Mark McGuire, oh, you know what? And I'll tell you about this. This is actually very cool, I think, I don't know. I, as you know, when you buy a regular card from tops.com, you have a chance at getting a one of one gold. It's very rare. The bigger the print run, the smaller the chances are, right? Um, but you got a chance. It's like uh, Charlie and the Ch Chocolate Factory's golden ticket. Because this card means so much to me, and you guys, you know, heard <laughs> part of the reason why that is, um, I'm putting out a bounty where if someone else gets this card, then and they want to trade it to me, I will give them this this package, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So I'm hoping, you know, getting this type of content out into the world and putting this bounty on as many places as I can think to put it, whoever gets it is going to hear this deal and be like, that sounds like a priceless thing. Um, because to me, getting the one-on-one -one gold for that would be priceless. So anybody that gets it, get one original painting of their choice, 18, or sorry, 24 by 36. So it's actually bigger than that. Uh, 24 by 36, whatever you want. Can't be a tops card, but I'll paint, I could paint a different Mark McGuire for you or something like that if that's what you want. And two tickets from anywhere in the world to New York City, two flights, round trip once COVID dies down. I'll probably buy the flights now just because they're cheaper, but I'm gonna fly U plus one into New York. I'm put you up in a hotel uh, for two days. You come for a weekend. If you wanna stay longer, you know, that's on you and you can do that. Um, it could be a place in Manhattan or it could be, there's a, there's a hotel right next to my art studio. So it was just kind of be whatever you want. And then you get to spend one full day here in the studio with me from morning to night and we'll paint stuff and anything that we paint that day you get to take home with you the whole day is about painting stuff for you on top of the one that i already have ready and waiting for you and that's like you know your thing that's what i'm giving for the one of one so i hope that i get the right um i hope if i the person but i mean i guess like you know uh if whoever gets it decides that money is more important than that I might be willing to pay, it. you know, I'm already spending a lot of money to make somebody get that. So if I have to buy it, I would probably, but yeah. So anyways, because of that, if you get this card, I recommend you get it straight from tops.com and you get it net between now and when it ends, uh, Friday at 1 PM Eastern is when the it's off the site. So it's 48 hours only. It came on today. So get those from the top site. You can get them on eBay right now. There are people are already selling them, which is which is great to see a secondary market for my cards exploding before the cards even off the top sites, bananas. But if you buy from tops, then you have a chance of getting that gold. And I hope you do, you know, you can buy 10 and you get a discount. Um, and realistically, you could buy 10, have a chance at getting the gold and then keep one for yourself, sell the other nine in two weeks when I'm telling you the news is gonna be ridiculous, then you could probably pay for the rest of you know pay for your other one um and helps me sell more units which is uh, gets my art into more homes which has been a huge uh, cool thing in this project uh okay so i think that's it yeah just so i guess i'll put this i'll put the link back down here okay so now i'm going to read you an excerpt try not to cry this time from my favorite book which is the alchemist by Paulo Coelho. This is just kind of a mini story that's inside the book. I was um, I was gifted this hard copy by Tony. It's very special. I won't show you exactly why, but it's very special. And this is my uh, placeholder. All right. So I think this should be better. Still, just a reminder, I'm not a good reader in terms of in front of people. Um, okay. So 
let's see. I want to try to fix that though. Here we go, guys. Yes, oh man, I'm so glad I got released with Thiel's Jeter. That was so good. That's one of my favorite cards in the whole set. And it is such an honor to be um, released with that. Is like, it literally couldn't have been any better. It's just amazing, so thank you guys. And yes, Mike, do give an email address, guys. You can get a bunch of email addresses, get a bunch of 10% offs. Okay, here's the uh, here's the story, and then we're gonna close it out for the night. But I think I like this story a lot. A certain shopkeeper sent his son to learn about the secrets of happiness from the wisest man in the world. The lad wandered through the desert for forty days and finally came upon a beautiful castle high atop a mountain. There was a, that's where the wise man lived. Rather than finding a saintly man, though, our hero, on entering the main room of the castle, saw a hive of activity. Tradesmen came and went. People were conversing in the corners. A small orchestra was playing soft music, and there was a table covered with platters of the most delicious food in that part of the world. The wise man conversed with everyone, and the boy had to wait for two hours before it was his turn to be given the man's attention. The wise man listened attentively to the boy's explanation of why he came, but told him that he didn't have time just then to explain the secret of happiness. He suggested that the boy look around the palace and return in two hours. Meanwhile, I want to ask you to do something, said the wise man, handling, handing the boy a teaspoon that held two drops of oil. As you wander around, carry the spoon with you without allowing the oil to spill. The boy began climbing and descending as many stairways of the palace, keeping his eyes fixed on the spoon. After two hours, he returned to the room where the wise man was. Well, asked the wise man, did you see the Persian tapestries hanging in my dining hall? Did you see the garden that it t uh, took the master gardener 10 years to create? Did you notice the beautiful parchments in my library? Well, the boy was embarrassed and confessed that he had observed nothing. His only concern had been not to spill the oil the wise man had entrusted to him. Then go back, observe the marvels of my world, the wise man said. You cannot trust a man if you do not know his house. Relieved, the boy picked up the spoon and returned to his exploration of the palace, this time observing all of the works of art on the ceiling and walls. He saw the gardens and all the mountains around him and the beauty of the flowers and the taste of which everything had been selected. Upon returning to the wise man, he relayed every detail of everything that he had seen. But where are the drops of oil I entrusted to you? asked the wise man. Looking down at the spoon, the boy saw that the oil was gone. Well... There is only one piece of advice I can give to you, said the wisest of wise men. The secret of happiness is to see all the marvels of the world and never forget. <laughs> I knew it would happen. Never forget the drops of oil on the spoon. That's it. All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have an awesome night. I'm going to go get some sleep. It's going to be a busy few days. Check out tops.com. Get the Mark McGuire. And you already know, stay awesome.